All right, time for the assault rifles. And all of the regular ones you can only get in Barry's campaign. So the first one is the NSR-47. Assault rifle with increased firepower but limited capacity. So it's the first one, let's go ahead and test it out. Alright, seems like an average assault rifle. I'm gonna go ahead and test the NSR-47 on a rotten. Alright, so all in all, three to seven shots to take down a rotten in normal mode with the NSR-47. Now, once again, when a rotten falls to the ground or performs a stun animation, usually one hit from anything else is gonna finish him off. So I usually don't try to count that last shot, but I guess I'll just go ahead and count it in here, so to give you the maximum amount of shots you're gonna expend defeating the enemy. So in range, whether or not it's counted, three to seven shots to take down a run. All right, that is it for the NSR-47. Now for the last regular assault rifle, the AK-7. Standard assault rifle with balanced rapid fire and firepower. A large ammo capacity makes it easy to use. All right, so compared with the previous rifle, it seems it has a very slightly less firepower, but it has double the capacity, the same firing rate, and it ha gives you an extra upgrade slot. So if you ask me, even though it's 10 points lower firepower, this rifle is better to use than the NSR-47. But then again, to each his own. That's just my opinion. Alright, let's test the AK-7 out. It's definitely louder than the NSR-47, and the reloading is a little different. It might be slightly slower than the NSR-47, but very hardly. Alright, let's test the AK-7 out on a rotten. Alright, so four to eight shots to take down a Rotten with the AK-7. So, the damage rate is barely any different from the NSR-47. So, you'll have to rely on the other statistics to really decide whether to use the NSR-47 or the AK-7. Well, not much more to say about them. That is it for the AK-7. Alright, now for the last assault rifle, as well as the only raid mode exclusive one. The return of the legendary High Roller, also known as the Golden AK-7. And it's a speed shot, just like the Golden Ammo Box 50, so nice. Let's go ahead and showcase it, and move on from the assault rifles. It's just as slow firing as ever. It was just the same way in Revelations 1, except in Revelations 1 it also had a insanely slow reload speed. They improved a little bit on that on this game. Alright, that is it for the high roller as well as all assault rifles. Alright, time for the sniper rifles. And just like the assault rifles, all the regular sniper rifles are featured in only Barry's campaign. So the first one is the M1891-30. Single shot sniper rifle. Not the quickest weapon, but great for picking off enemies at a difference. Alright, so the standard first rifle is a bolt action, of course. So it's most likely more powerful than the semi-automatic, which will be the next one. Alright, let's test it out. All right.
right, your standard bolt-action rifle. Now, before recording, I went through what possible enemies to test this on, and the problem with Barry's campaign is there's not a lot of good enemies for the weapons. Like, there's a couple enemies that are only defeated when you expose their weak spots. Otherwise, they would be perfect enemies. And all the rest of the enemies are like boss battles, and they're just too powerful to do a simple weapon test. So, the only thing I can really do is test the rifles on a rotten. And the reason why I think it's okay to do so is because the semi-automatic rifle is slightly weaker than the full action, but it takes more than one shot. So, I'm just gonna put the category of rifles onto Rotten. So, let's test the M1891-30 on a Rotten. Alright, so one shot from the M1891 to take down a Rotten. Now, I knew that was gonna happen, and once again, the reason I'm doing the rifles on the Rotten is because there's no other good enemy to test these on that doesn't require destroying the weak spot. So this is practically the only enemy I could properly test this on. Alright, so one shot from the M1891, no matter where you hit them. I even tried a leg shot, and they still went down in one shot. So this is a pretty powerful sniper rifle. Alright, well, that is it for it. Ow! Who are you? What do you want? Put it down! <gasps> Fuck me! Is he with TerraSave? I not know this thing you are speaking. Why don't you have a bracelet? Do I look like a woman to you? Holy shit, old man. You don't know what's going on? You've got to get out of here, before it's too late. <laughs> Never! I stay my home. Now go away! Now for the last regular sniper rifle, the SVD, also known as the Dragunov. A sniper rifle that can fire consecutive shots, but with reduced firepower. Alright, so this is the semi-automatic rifle, has a much faster firing rate, has double the capacity, but yeah, it does lower the firepower quite a bit, a whole 150 points to be exact. Alright, let's test the SVD out. So your typical semi-automatic rifle. Of course, it's the Dragonoth. Alright, let's go ahead and test this out on a Rotten. So it took a total of three shots from the SVD to take down a Rotten. So it is somewhat weaker than the M1891. Now, for some reason, when I tested it on Rotten in a completely different area, all of them died with only one shot from the SVD. But this zombie, specifically, survived more than one. I don't know why. I wonder if he's a little more powerful than all the rest of the Rotten in this game. But this Rotten does go down in one shot still when you test the M1891 on it. But the SVD, it's able to survive up to three shots. So, not sure. But once again, not being super detailed with these weapon reviews, I'm just showcasing the weapons and testing them on easy enemies. Alright, that is it for the SVD. Oversee this, bitch. Fuck yeah! Now for the first raid mode only sniper rifle, the anti-material rifle from Resident Evil 6. Now, one thing to mention before I showcase this weapon is in this game, they do not allow you to reload this weapon because the firepower is so massive. So they equalize it by stripping your ability to reload this weapon with rifle ammo. So you can only use one magazine full of anti-material bullets, and then the weapon is done. So you might want to use your capacity upgrade a bit for this weapon, but with that massive firepower, it should make taking out bosses pretty easy. Hopefully. <laughs> Alright, so let's showcase it and move on to the next rifle. Alright, so it's a bulky-ass rifle still, but it's no longer bolt action like it was in Resident Evil 6. So there's a plus right there. 
Alright, that is it for the anti-material rifle. Now for the last sniper rifle, the legendary Miramasa. This is a return from Revelations 1. Alright, nothing much to say about it. Let's showcase it and move on from the sniper rifles. Alright, um, nothing to say. That is it for the Miramasa, as well as all sniper rifles.